Hi there. Welcome to this topic video on macroeconomics. And in this session, we'll focus on the output gap. Now, all countries go through an economic cycle. They go through stages of strong boom, slowdown, recession and recovery. And the UK economy is no different. Take a look at this chart, which shows the level of national output for the UK on a quarter by quarter basis since 2003. We had a period of very strong growth before the recession hit in 2008 and 2009. Then a period of slow growth. And since then, the economy has sustained a fairly decent recovery. But the key question is, how much further can the economy grow? How much spare capacity does an economy have to, to meet an increase in aggregate demand? And how close is a country to operating at its productive potential? So when we think about these questions, we're basically thinking about the size of the estimated output gap. One way of thinking about the output gap is to use a production possibility frontier diagram, PPF. So let's say we start off at point E, a long way inside the boundary, and there's an increase in aggregate demand. This will lead to an expansion of real GDP as we move up the aggregate supply curve. And as the economy recovers from recession, the amount of spare capacity that's left, spare labour, spare land, spare capital machinery, that will fall. So as we move closer to the PPF boundary, the degree to which the economy has spare underutilised resources is diminishing. And that's a relevant idea to think about when you consider the output gap. Now, the technical definition of the output gap is the difference between the actual level of GDP, the actual level of national output, and its estimated potential level. And we normally express the output gap as a percentage, as a percentage of the level of potential output. I'm going to put in here an aggregate demand and aggregate supply diagram. So I hope you're familiar with this kind of theory. In this situation, the level of GDP, uh, Y1, at the equilibrium is to the left of YP, a level of potential national output. So in this sense, the economy is operating with a negative output gap. There is underutilized factors of production. And in that situation, the economy can normally expect to, to grow fairly quickly because you have spare resources you can use up. And if the level of GDP Y1 is less than YP, we say that the output gap is negative. What about the data for the UK? Well, there's three lines in this chart. One is the central forecast in blue. That's the one we'll refer to. There's a low forecast in yellow and a high forecast in grey. And what that means is that these economic forecasters can't agree amongst themselves on how big the size of the output gap is for the British economy. But what they tend to agree on, more or less, is that in 2008, during the recession, we moved firmly into a negative output gap. In other words, GDP was well below its potential level of output. And in 2009, the output gap was minus 4%. Now, since then, the economy has recovered. And you can see, if you follow the blue line, that the output gap has diminished. By some estimates, as we headed towards the end of 2015, the output gap was less than 1% of our potential national output. In other words, there's less of a margin of spare capacity left for the country to continue to grow and recover. So we make a distinction between a negative output gap and a positive output gap. With a negative output gap, the level of actual GDP is below its potential. And that means that some factor resources, particularly labour, are underutilised. So you could link a negative output gap to cyclical or demand deficient unemployment. And indeed, if the economy is operating in that situation, the big risks for policymakers tend to be the problems of high unemployment and also the possibility of consumer price deflation. On the other hand, a country could have a positive output gap perhaps because they've enjoyed several years of an economic boom. And in that situation, actual GDP is in excess of 
the estimated potential GDP. Factors of production must be working extremely intensively to generate that kind of level of national output. There'll be many factories offering shift or shift work or overtime. The big danger when you run into a significant positive output gap is that you're going to get some inflationary pressure, either demand pull or possibly cost push or both. Now, just a quick word about the, the problems in measuring the output gap. This is useful for your evaluation. So we know the output gap is a measure of the difference between actual and potential. The problem is that we can't observe directly the supply side potential of an economy. Take the UK, for example. It's made up of millions of people in the labour market, hundreds of thousands of different businesses. How on earth do we measure their estimated productivity and output potential? We don't have, for example, uh, particularly accurate data on the labour force. It's hard, for example, to measure the scale of net inward or outward migration. In some sectors, measuring productivity is, is pretty hard. And when we survey producers about how much spare capacity they have, they may not necessarily themselves know the true, the true situation. Essentially, we don't really know uh, how much businesses are investing, and what the consequences are, for example, of investment in new software or building digital platforms. In the labour market, some people may have decided to leave the active labour market and stop searching for work. Others have a job but would like to work more hours. So there could be some underemployment in the labour market. Well, there's a lot of text on this slide. And uh, press the pause button if you want to take some notes. But essentially, the takeaway point from this slide is that the output gap as a measure of spare capacity in the economy is pretty hard to estimate. And there's a big variation in the numbers we get from different economists. What we do know is that when the output gap is negative, the economy has scope and slack to grow. And in the UK at the moment, it is, it is still negative, which is good news. But there are some fears that low productivity and low investment may hold back our productive potential going forward. Well, we'll return to many of these topics in future macro videos. But for now, thanks for joining me and hopefully see you again sometime soon.